Greetings, this is an intro to the idea of cyclic groups. So to just introduce this, a cyclic group has the unique um, unique capacity that it has either one or more elements uh, inside its set that have the following property. One can use this element um, and applying to it repeatedly the group's operation, the group's very own operation, in order to generate every other element of the entire group. And this element is called the generator. So the specifics, if we have a group G that is cyclic, then we have, uh, there exists some, and I will actually, by the way, say, uh, G belongs to our group, our cyclic group that I'm considering. Also A that I will mention, use, belongs to G as well. So there exists some G and there can be G1, G2, there can be more generators in a group, by the way, and you'll see that in a second, in an example. So there exists some generator G, some element that belongs to this group, um, such that if one applies to it the group's operation a certain amount of times, one is eventually able to generate every every uh, you know the g to the k power just like with an operation between two elements we often use the same way of writing it like a product we just write them next to each other without any symbol and the same goes the idea goes further here that this exponent it means that i apply the group's operation k times to g so there exists some generator g inside g and if we already proclaim here G belongs to the group, cyclic group G we're considering A that I'll mention in a second also. Um, and by the way, this should be written slightly differently, uh, this part. That every element A and that belongs to G as well, every element A in G will equal to basically the generator and I'll raise it to the cave power just like was seen a, a second ago denoting that if I if I um, apply to it the group's operation, the G's operation a K number of times I can eventually uh, generate any other element of the entire group so G to the cave power is the, uh, the, the G's operation applied to that element uh, K times so this is quite nice and the notation we use is as follows. We use these special brackets and put just the generator inside there. And it is denoted in the way that it's basically a set. And just like we had here, J, G to the K. And we have um, simply that K is some integer, all right? We have to repeat the operation a whole time, an integer time, not like 1.2 times, but that's why we use integers here. One time, two times, and so on. And uh, yeah, so the entire group is cyclic if it actually is equal to this. If it is equal uh, that every element of it can be generated by using this one element, to which the group's operation is um, applied a certain amount of times. So let's say for some element, you have to in, uh, apply the operation two times. For another one, just once. Just leave the element as it is, because it already is one of the elements of the group. For another element, we will have 10 times until... Uh, at, uh, we will need to apply the group's operation 10 times to the generator, um, particular generator, in order to, to um, generate that other um, element of the group. So it depends for each element. Now, we can take a look at an example. So a nice example could be, for example, um, we can look at some integer modulo 5, for example. And uh, Basically, one could, and by the way, let me say that now I'm saying that I'm specifying my group G, and I'm saying, okay, so it's integer modulo 5, 
uh, and then I specify it has addition and it has addition module 5 um, which I just further make sure that everybody knows um, that the addition that we apply here follows the rule that you're basically adding numbers and looking at the result as it usually is but when it goes beyond 4 we look for the remainder when it gets divided by 5 so it, if we have 21 mod mod 5 it basically means divide by 5 and take the remainder which is 1 so for any numbers let's say if I add 2 plus 4 both are inside the set mod, uh, of these integers below 5 because the set actually contains 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 so 4 plus 3 for example is 7 but we have to remember this modulo 5 and therefore in this um, the result actually under the um, plus modulo 5 operation will be the remainder after we divide the 7 by 5 which is 2 all right so we got this out of the way and we can look at some generator example so as it turns out this group actually has more generators and uh, the simplest one probably to look at is one so a generator possible generator of it is one and how do we know well i use addition and i can generate every other element i know that g contains these elements it contains zero one two three and four all right so I use one, one times, and I don't change anything about just the element itself. The generator is already, the generator as uh, I have said some minutes ago, is already in G, all right? So applying it zero times, just leaves it as the generator already is, and that is already a member of the group. I do it with one other, um, I, op I put this element in operation with itself one time, using the group's operation here, the plus. So I get two, all right? So we have the generator, then we have two. Then apply the operation once again, we get to three. Then once again, we get to four. And then because of the modulo, well, five we get, right? But we have to take the remainder after divided by five because it's modulo five, and that will be zero. And suddenly using this generator, we've gotten all the five elements of the group. Now let's think about other element that can work like this. So, for example, we can choose two. So if we have two, well, first we have two. That's already inside the group. Then we add two once, we get four, also inside it. We add it once again, we get six. But the remainder, after dividing by five, is um, one. So we get one. Then we add two, we have eight. But the remainder, after dividing by five, is three. Then once again, we get ten. And the remainder, after dividing by five, is zero. So again, we have one two, three, four, and the zero. We have all the elements. So we've already proved that one works and two works as generators of this. Then let's check three. So for three, first we have three itself, that's inside the group already. Then add it once, we get six, but we get the modulo, which makes it one. Add it once again, it's nine, remainder after dividing by five is four. And then add again 12, remainder after dividing by 5 is 2. Once again is 15 and the rem remainder is 0. And we have all 1, 2, 3, 4 and 0. And the same can be done with, uh, the same can be done with uh, 4, we can try. So let's see. First we have 4 itself, then we have 8, remainder is 3 after dividing by 5, then we have 12 divided by 5 remainder is 2 then we add once again 16 remainder is 1 then again we get 20 the remainder is 0 so we got all the elements 1 2 3 4 the only element that would not work as a generator is actually 0 because if we add 0 plus 0 plus 0 it always will be equal to 0 so it won't work now there is a property that one could observe in this context, actually more properties at the same time, quite complex if one wants to get into proofs or look deeper, and that takes more time. And this was an introduction video. But in any case, we've seen that, for example, for this group, it's quite straightforward because 
in this case, almost all members of the group will be generators. In some other groups, even similar ones to this one, not all will be. All right, here, uh, four out of five, 80% of the elements were generators. If we had integer modulo 16, it would not be necessarily so. A lower percentage of the elements would be generators. But in any case, remember, for cyclic groups, the most important fact is as follows. If one has a cyclic group, then the basic fundamental property is there's a generator inside the group, an element that belongs to it, and using the group's operation multiple, multiple times on it generates all the other elements inside the group. 